This video contains footage taken from my recent neon sign project. It also includes useful tips such as how to weld up unwanted holes. The project will continue on another video where I'll be showing you how to accurately fit repair sections together ready to be TIG welded. This is the original binnacle out of my van. This is the one that the van come with and I kept this as a spare because I managed to pick up another one for about £10 or something off eBay. So what I did is I, I put this one by, I thought well I'll hold on to this and if I mess up in any way, because I fitted the new clocks in the van, the different clocks, I thought well if I mess up I've always got the original one to fall back on and I can have a second attempt at it. I didn't mess up so I've got this as a spare and I thought it really really be good to use it on this sign project because I can utilize this, make it larger, and um, utilize this to curve the corners to give the sign some shape. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a square box. And I want it, I want it to look a bit curvy, and I want it to look a bit something that just hasn't been folded up in a folding machine in five minutes. You know, I want it to look a bit special. The basic metal work is finished now on the overall sign quite pleased with how it's turned out. In fact, I'm very pleased with how it's turned out. Next, my attention's turned to cutting the binnacle up. So I'm gonna cut the binnacle into four, and um, I wanna be very accurate going down the center here, so I get it evenly balanced. From side to side isn't as important because I can just tie this into the end and then just cut that wherever it sits on that panel there. That's what I'm gonna do next. This isn't gonna fit particularly well. I don't think it's going to be a bit of a gain to get this to fit, but nothing that's worth having comes easy. I've got it quite nicely cut through now on the radius sections. What I'll probably do now is just cut this through with a pair of tin snips because it'll just be quicker and easier and uh, I'm going to lose this piece anyway. And there's a, like a feature line that runs around here. It doesn't follow this primer line exactly. This is the primer you can see where the, it had like a chrome ring around here. And um, that's why there's primer there because they obviously painted this black after they fitted that, that finisher. So what I'm going to do is when I weld it up, I'm going to weld it just off the detail line because that's where the most amount of strength is. So I can cut it through there, it doesn't matter. If I cause a little bit of distortion when I cut that, because I'm going to lose it anyway. I've just got 99.9% .9 of the paint off with some paint stripper. They've come up quite well. You see there's quite a bit of rust here and there. So what I will do next is I'm going to clean up with a cleaning strip wheel on a die grinder. And these are the wheels here part number there. I'm just going to clean up where I need to weld for now. I'll get these welded up and then I'll cut these to shape and then I'll use a strip and clean wheel again to go over the whole part that's left because obviously you don't need to clean the bits that we're going to cut out. Just before I weld them up I just noticed the holes aren't exactly square so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give these a bit of a tap up. Make sure that they are nice and square before I go welding them up. When I use a strip and clean wheel after I've squared them up, I always wear a face visor. Always worth wearing one of these because these discs shed and they throw off pieces at high speed. And even if it just hits you in the face, it's very, very painful and can easily draw blood. I mean, it doesn't bear to think what would happen if it went straight in your eye, but yeah, I mean, even your face is uh, pretty sort of vulnerable to these discs. So I just thought I'd say that before I go and show you me using it. Got a nice bar of copper there, uh, quite thick, so it absorbs quite heat. What I do next is I'm going to give this a good clean up. I can do this with the strip and clean wheel again. 
always best to get this nice and clean because the weld won't stick to it because it's copper. Uh, don't make the mistake of thinking, oh, well, I'll just leave it dirty because you actually want the welder to make good contact with this. You actually want it to be very conductive and then you can build your weld up on top of it and then when you pull the copper away the uh, weld is sort of puddled out into the area that you do want it to weld into i.e. the panel so like I say you have it nice and clean and then you weld through the hole onto the copper the copper is nice and clean it makes good conduction to the welder it puddles out and then when it's welded, you grip it up, quickly release it, and then the majority of the heat then stays in the copper, not in the panel itself. So it not only acts as a good way of welding the hole up, it also is a good heat sink as well to take the majority of that heat away from the panel and leave it in the copper. all those little holes welded up no drama at all no distortion happy with that of course the inside remains nice and flat because it was against the copper bar to take the weld down initially I'm going to use a 3M Cubitron 2 36 grit grinding discs these are the best discs I've ever used without doubt People do complain to me about these being too expensive. Well, if you've ever watched any of my videos, you will notice that I don't buy expensive kit. I don't buy branded stuff. I buy stuff that I can afford. And I buy these because they probably outlast a good disc by about four times over. So you get four sort of discs out of this one. And that's why I buy these. I believe certain things are worth just spending that extra bit of money on. Something else I've bought recently is a speed control. So a motor speed control so I can put my angle grinder through this. Now this only seems to work on cheaper angle grinders. If you get a good quality angle grinder that's got a soft start system on it, it doesn't like it, it won't work for some reason. Um, perhaps you could bypass that, but I've got this budget grinder and this works really well actually. So it just means that I can slow the speed of the grinder down, which just makes it so much more usable. So I thought I'd just mention that. So once I ground the weld down so that it's just slightly high, I finish it off with these roll lock discs. Now this is just a, a cheaper right angle die grinder with a roll lock mandrel in it and what I use is these little grinding discs I think that's an 80 grit one that's a 50 grit one and I use these just to take it down so the weld's dead flush I can then polish it up with a surface conditioning disc these come in different sizes uh, I think this is a genuine 3M one this one and this is a cheapo Chinese copy um, both work pretty well actually. I can also polish it up of course using the 3M clean and strip disc. Hole's gone now, 
polished up, plenty, plenty good enough for this job. Particularly as I've still got to cut around and weld it yet. Just bear in mind, whenever you're doing your polishing and your cleaning up, as you're polishing and cleaning up, you are taking away material thickness from the panel that you're welding up. We all want to see perfectly invisible spot-on repairs, but at the end of the day, you're far better off having a few grinding marks or even still being able to see the edge of the panel or whatever. You're better off seeing that and keeping as much of the panel thickness as you possibly can rather than it looking absolutely flawless but paper thin no point in that at all really is there the inside's absolutely spot on as well so next i'm going to cut around there so that it can be welded into the sign backing really started to pay attention to the profile of the panel now and i've sharpened out when i want to make my cut you'll see that the cut comes in. 